So this is my wife Kim's Honda 1100 Rebel 2022 DCT. And we just recently put on the Honda OEM heated grips. And the um, this is my first video kind of helping the community understand what I did to put these things on. Um, the instructions from Honda were terrible and it assumes that you have the service manual for this model. Um, I want to estimate that the instructions were about five to six pages long. Uh, most of it explaining that you have to take off certain uh, panels here, here, uh, on the other side, the fuel tank, um, uh, the battery box. Um, all that's pretty self-explanatory, but getting to the fuel tank and where it wants you to route certain cables, um, it just assumes that you have the service manual. And unfortunately, this project took me all night long. Uh, and I'm talking like I was up in this hangar until about 6 o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to show you about step by step without breaking the bike down, but just kind of pointing some things out for anybody that's going to do this installation. Um, there are aftermarket solutions um, that, that we also saw that do not require um, getting cables rounded uh, under the fuel tank and, and digging in here. Uh, I do not know anything about that. We wanted to go OEM, and so uh, hopefully this video will be helpful getting zoomed in to certain areas that I found to be most troublesome. Um, uh, I did locate uh, a photocopied service manual, which was pretty helpful. If you stick around to the end, and I'll try to get through this as, as quick as I can, so it's not such a long video, but if you'll stick around to the end, I'll talk about some other um, things that we added to her bike. Uh, quite frankly, I'm pretty jealous of Kim's bike. That's my Goldwing. Um, as soon as uh, I was very, uh, well, I'm still very proud of it. Love it. But working on this bike and getting her, uh, getting this bike the way that she wanted it, uh, I'm becoming more and more excited for, obviously, both of them. So, um, uh, first and foremost, uh, first step is you're going to cut off your original grips um, uh, which is going to require you to remove these end caps here uh, on both sides. I don't know uh, the size, um, but I, uh, these are all metric. Pretty much everything on the bike is metric. These may be Loctite on the, uh, on the handlebars, so not too much torque is required. These will pull off, and then you'll... Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to make some uh, some error corrections as I go. On the throttle side, this does not cut off. This will actually slide off. So we'll go over here to the passenger side. This is one that you will cut off um, after you take that off. And there will be some adhesive that regular uh, spray on Goo Gone will get that uh, perfectly clean. Um, that's that's uh, just black under here. Uh, just like this, black on the bar, um, clean that off, and once that you're done with that, uh, wipe that down with alcohol to get the Goo Gone uh, formula off of there. Um, you won't need to unscrew any of this. Um, this will basically uh, push on uh, the new grip, will push on, and it's a hardcore grip. So uh, starting with the left side, um, once that you got it cleaned, uh, I think I used, uh, you can use a Honda, um, uh, grip adhesive. Uh, I used just some light, uh, Gorilla Glue, uh, got a, a couple of strips on here and also sprayed just a little bit of alcohol to get it to slide on quick, slam that on. And I'm going to zoom in real close so you can see. Uh, the alignment here. This is that seam right there and then you can just see that that little tick mark is uh, pretty much lined up there. And in the instructions you'll see that it wants you to do uh, about a 25 degree offset uh, from here to this seam here. 25 degrees 
give or take from that seam there. And then you'll just let this wire hang down. That'll get your first grip installed. And when you come over here, um, this uh, unit right here will need to slide off for you to do that. You're gonna come back here. You'll see a screw here, another screw under there, and one screw up top, right in there. To get to this screw, this braking assembly um, needs to be loosened. You don't need to take it off. Um, I believe you can do either or, um, but I just loosened one, and since this is a, kind of a C-clamp here, um, I just did the top one. Uh, and you'll notice this index here. There's a little, there's a little dot right there, a little index in the bar, and it's met with this seam here. Uh, the instructions lays at least that part out. So what I did is I unscrewed that, or just maybe two or three threads, and then I slid this down just a little bit. It doesn't need to move too much other than being able to move the braking uh, assembly uh, either up or down so you can get to that screw. And once that you, this will not move, this back assembly here, but this front cap will come off. Once that you have that front cap, um, you will see a screw, uh, a silver screw right behind. It's the biggest silver screw in there. Leave that on. You don't need to mess with that one. There's a smaller silver screw just below it. That you will need to uh, uh, take out. Once that that screw is out, this whole, uh, this is, there's an assembly in here that will allow this whole unit to uh, come out of this assembly here and pull straight on out. Pretty easy. Um, there would be no adhesive involved in, uh, in getting this one on or off. Um, as you can see, there's play in there and it just locks into there when you're done. Once that you have this assembly uh, pulled out, uh, I believe I actually have an example here. This is the old throttle handle. And if, if you can kind of get an idea, I believe it goes in there like this. You'll see in here on these four points, there's white grease. Um, and uh, you can find this uh, probably at your local uh, uh, car parts store. Um, but just a dab on each index in there. So one, two and then spin that around, and then one, two. So if you see kind of how that is. And uh, in just a little bit, it goes a long way. Then you're gonna slide that assembly or that mechanism back in there. Uh, since you only took out that small silver screw, you put that silver screw back in there. Give it a nice snug uh, uh, tightness on there. Uh, no Loctite or anything like that is involved. Put that to the side. And then you're going to um, get this assembly sandwiched back on there. And loosely tighten one, two, three screws. Um, once that they're uniformly uh, snug, go ahead and uh, work a good uh, hand tight on all of those. This uh, assembly does turn or, or does pivot just a smidgen that took me a good 30 minutes to figure out that's completely normal if you, um, this mechanism uh, does the same if you work it just a little bit that's totally fine you didn't miss tighten anything um, but just to let you know that that's fine um, what I took care to uh, do after I got that done, and you're happy with where both of these are set. Uh, and when I say happy, 
uh, not only do you want the 25 degree offset, oops, excuse me, but you'll want this line here to be, a pair, um, I believe the term is parallel with that line there. So you got, so it just looks symmetrical. There you go. Um, some blue Loctite on your end caps, and there you go. This wire will be hanging down here. The other wire will be hanging on the side there. Let me get this uh, uh, windshield out of the way, and we'll continue here. All right, on mine, it already came with, a, well, you'll notice in the kit, you're gonna get some, uh, it's gonna explain where to put some mark measurements on, um, on the wires, which is basically gonna help you understand where to start zip tying. It's very, it's at least very specific in that. That's about as detailed as the instructions get. You're gonna get a bracket. And I'm gonna zoom in here on what that bracket looks like. This screw right here that it tells you to remove, it's already installed into this thing, but the screw does absolutely nothing other than waiting for this bracket if in fact you put these heated grips on at some point in your life. So you'll back that screw out, you'll attach that bracket there. There's a little index there, of course, waiting for this bracket as well. And they're gonna give you this uh, uh, first zip tie. Mine was already installed there. I believe this is about 10 millimeters difference. It tells you to put a 10 millimeter uh, mark at 10 millimeters and another one uh, here and then another one uh, down there. So that's going to be your first, that, that zip ties there and then pushes up into that. Then it comes down and this will be your first replaced zip tie. This is your first zip tie that mounts on a little uh, tick on that's uh, welded onto the bar so this will push out the way to get that original one off as if you see here just in there you can take a small flat head and then just kind of lift up the little index that keeps that zip tie on the the little uh, welded tick on there you'll re-zip tie it and then slide it back on there you're gonna do the same for this side. This is about what this is going to look like. It's going to come off here. It's going to, uh, and notice it's, it is a, I don't want to say it's a sharp turn, but it's a turn, but it's not snug. Okay. Like you, you want just a little bit of play there. And then it's going to uh, come in. You're going to get your first zip tie right under there to the main harness, not to anything else under there, not to your, uh, um, emergency brake module but just to the main harness you're going to replace this other one here this one is a zip tie that's on that welded little tick on the bar same situation flat head get in there and pick the uh, release off of that that'll pull right off and this will continue to follow around so you're going to get both hand grip wires to meet right here and it's going to say uh, zip tie on the taped portion so if you see really closely where these two are meeting there's actually uh, some some tape there that comes on the uh, the wires themselves you won't have to do that this is a I'm trying to remember here I'm on the uh, right side of the bike here. This is another bracket that you have to install. This nut right here will come off. This nut is what goes to the, tr um, uh, the tree up here. Uh, at, least, at least that's what I call it, the risers. So you'll back this nut off, take it off completely, and everything should stay in place when you do that. You'll slide that bracket in there to where, and it's really hard to see. Let me see if I can get a better 
view for you. And this portion is gonna stick out where you're gonna put the uh, zip tie push bracket in there, okay? Very similar to what that is. It's basically pushing in to that. And that bracket is pretty easy to uh, figure out. It will index in there. There's really no other way to put it on there. And you'll, uh, I, I did not look at the torque value of that nut, but give it a good cinch, you'll be fine. All right, here's what compelled me to make this video is this next part. Once that you get this off, and I, and I think you might wanna take this part off too, just so you have plenty of visual room in there. It tells you to go underneath. I'll tell you what, let me pull that off. This gave me the worst time. It tells you to go underneath a particular area when in fact, literally impossible. And I don't know if it's because uh, if there's any difference of the DCT model or, or what. But we'll get in here. And I appreciate your patience through the video thus far. Okay. As you see, these wires are coming down here. following this brake line. So it's gonna to be to the left of the brake line. And it wants you to tuck those wires through, and I wish I had some light, but through here, underneath, okay? Not possible because there is a brake uh, more break situation on the other side and it just cannot get through here It has to go on this on my on our bike anyways on Kim's bike through the top part here and and I uh, got um, There is another Hole To stick one of these um, push zip ties in there that took some finagling, but you can just see it. There's, excuse me, there's more taped ends right here. Those taped ends, that's where it's zip tied again, and it's pushing on the top, uh, from the top down in there, and you can just make it out. Here's the bottom, and it's pushing into this bracket. I just don't have a light. It wants you to go under it and then push up, it, uh, just repeating not possible took me hours this bolt that you see here you will want you will need to remove it this is uh this goes to help remove or at least uh, unseat the fuel tank and i'll show you how to do that now while we're over here this right here will pop up Might need a screwdriver. Stand by. Very, very lightly get under there. And that just lifts up. Literally no effort required whatsoever. And that will pull out. That's what's, this is what's holding that. Little, little plastic things and it literally just sits in there. Again, I don't know the, uh, the size of it, but you will um, get that bolt out. Once that you route your cables through this side, they're gonna come out right here, and I'm not gonna take this off, but uh, you're gonna 
come out through here, and then you're gonna start following the bike's uh, main harness. And for reference, it's this biggie right here. And this tucks in, follows all the way up, just under there. And it's gonna tell you no more than two millimeters uh, zip tied to the main harness away from the uh, two millimeters from the currently um, existing zip ties. So you'll have one there. You'll have one another one here. Um, and then you can go zip tie crazy if you want afterwards. I have another one here. And then we get to the other booger of the installation. This will pop straight on out. If you notice, I'm just pulling there and then little from right there. Here's what's holding that on. Just two um, push points there. You will take this bolt off here. I did take this one off, but the manual says you only have to take this one off. Um, the best that you're gonna do, you're not gonna be able to remove this, but the best that you're gonna be able to do is pull down very firmly to get back in here. If you can see this, this is the uh, heated grips module right there. What you're gonna do um, is you're gonna reach in here and down and you'll feel a harness. It's really the only thing back there. You won't feel anything else. So whatever you feel, that's what you need. You will be able to pull that out with a finger or two and get it to where, I mean, it's it's very tight in there. Get it to where you can just plug, uh, pull out the dummy connector that's hooked on the end of that harness, and then you'll plug in your module. Uh, once that you have the module um, in hand, you'll know what I'm talking about, but there's a uh, there's a dot on the top. It'd be great if there was a light. Anyway, um, the very top part of it, uh, the non-pinned side, I should say, that's going to be up, okay? And, and there's a little index where you can slide it on to this. That will be very clearly depicted on the instructions, um, so without me having to explain it. You will push the harness in first with the pins down, and then you will set that on the index in here. Uh, again, clearly depicted in the uh, um, instructions, and those can be found online. Once that you have that, you're done here. But leave this plate off for now. Next, let's get the key in and get the seat off. Pardon the zoom in. I only have one hand here. There we go. The seat is off. I don't recall if you need to move, remove the battery box. I don't believe so. The only reason I had it off is I put a battery tender on for her. Um, the instructions call to remove the tank. Not necessary. Um, but I got about halfway anyways. Here's how you do that. You will at least need to do this part, in my opinion. These two bolts here, and that bolt again up front that I was showing you. That, unless you have a universal joint and you can get to that, um, you're going to be using a long Allen wrench for like 50 turns. It's a long bolt. I don't know why. Um, if you want, uh, I'm not going to say how to pull the tank off because it's pretty involved. To, um, but with at least just that, those, those three bolts removed, you can lift this up. I suggest getting a battle buddy to help you with that. Um, otherwise, uh, you can lift that up and put a block underneath just right here underneath this point here. Uh, the tank should not go anywhere because it's well seated in here. For the heck of it, if you want to understand how the tank is mounted on there, you can uh, put your belly here 
in your arms on the other side. Uh, I would suggest doing this on a darn near empty tank. Um, I think I had like maybe a half gallon left of fuel in there when I did this. Uh, this tank will pull up just a hint and then back. So um, my suggestion is just so you can get comfortable with what you've done by loosening it is uh, just rocking the tank a bit and feeling comfortable that it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, I should say do everything at your own risk. Uh, this is purely entertainment video only. Okay, there's the disclaimer. Should have put that at the beginning. All right, once that you got that blocked up, the uh, there is a harness under there with like a clearish yellowish boot and it's got two plugs in it, both dummy pinned as well. Um, I'll show you what those look like. This is one of them. And we'll pull out of one. Uh, and I'm not sure which is which. One of these is uh, the one that's on for the controller module and the other one is for uh, um, that's under the boot. You'll end up with three of these total. You're gonna, uh, it's a tight fit. In, in fact, you can just barely see it. Um, let me see if I can get a better angle without, I'll tell you what, here's the light. I'm trying to be as detailed as I possibly can. There it is. You can just tell. You can just see it. That's a that's the exact location in all of these bikes. If you can see that, uh, it's going to be it's showing right through there. You want to lift this up just enough to get access to that boot and pull those dummy pins out. Once that your harness continues to follow in under here, you're going behind this fuel line here. If you'll notice, it's going behind there. And then once that you make it past this fuel line here, you're going, you have a straight shot to that boot there. You're gonna plug those in. You're gonna make sure the boot is set nicely back in there. Again, just kind of tucked in there. Once that it's nice and where you want it to be, nothing's being pinched. Make sure the fuel tank is back in place where you want it to be. I'd go ahead and start installing these again. Loosely tighten these. Loosely tighten that. Give your tank a shake. Make sure it's nice and firm, firmly set back where it needs to be. And then, uh, again, I don't have the torque specs for these two bolts or that bolt, but the way that they, they came undone, they were not crazy tight. So put it back uh, with a nice, uh, firm, snug torque to your liking and uh, and that should do it. Once that you have that all complete, put this back to, uh, put the seat back on. Get the bike back respectable to where we want it to be. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. That's the third time of trying the same thing. There we go. This is what it's going to do. Put the key on. And you should see that off. I'm not seeing it. if it was flashing, there's some troubleshooting codes and such. But if you push the button, it's gonna flash uh, however many times it's currently set on. And then you're also gonna get an indication next to your time that the heated grips are on. Once that it starts, you know, flashing, it was in the number two setting, it was flashing two, flashing two, flashing two, just to kind of show you. And then, uh, then it stays lit up when they're on. You get a solid. If I push it again, 
It's gonna go to one. It's just gonna flash one. It's gonna show one on the screen. And then it's gonna just go back to show regular time. If you push it again, it just turns off. Um, so it goes five, four, three, two, one. All right, so from the off setting, pushing it once, it's gonna put it on five. You get five depicted and then push it again, four, three, two, one, and then off. That's what that looks like. And uh, two is perfect for about 50 degrees this morning. Uh, if you've got gloves, you probably want three or four. Five just burns you out, son. So um, that is the installation of the Honda OEM grips. Long video, but I really wanted to get some zoom in shots and show you how I uh, routed everything. Um, if, uh, if you have any time stamps that would be helpful in the comments, uh, certainly knock yourself out. And uh, now I'll put this back on here and then I'll just show you around the bike for anybody that decided to stick around. I'll show you what else that we put on here. Kind of hard to do with one hand. I have no intention of editing. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for bearing with the uh, the video. I'll tell you what, that's I'm gonna leave that on and not clip it for uh, just for looks right now. Um, the fairing, uh, man, I totally forget who manufactured the fairing, but it's fantastic, fantastic. No chest wind whatsoever, 85, 90. It's not blowing you off the uh, the road anymore. Um, I'm 5'7", and start getting head. Uh, <laughs> shit, now I'm gonna have to edit the video. You start getting head wind uh, just uh, from the chin up. Um, with this, but it's it's not turbulent and it feels great. Um, the the other modifications that she added was the Mustang seat, and it is a must have. Um, you got a little bit of a butt shelf right here um, that's much much more efficient uh, keeping you on the bike than the OEM seat. The OEM seat uh, tends to round out a little sooner than this. This has a little bit more uh, of a crotch shelf right there. Um, the badging on it looks great. The stitching gives a little bit more character and you have significantly much, uh, much more uh, padding. It's just phenomenal. We added this uh, OEM tank pads as well. Uh, we added the, uh, the rack there that's the oem rack and we ordered the two brothers racing exhaust this is the low profile have not really seen any videos online of the uh, low profile but this is what that looks like the installation almost had me concerned i thought that they sent me the wrong uh wrong kit once that you pull off um the exhaust on the um, the stock exhaust there is a good one to two inch uh, in width um, steel gasket that needs to be pried and scraped off of there Other, otherwise this won't push on all the way i thought for sure i was screwed um, this mounts behind the stock uh, bracket here and then you'll Torque the mess down uh, using that bolt. We may get around to painting this black, but that's what that looks like. Pretty easy installation. We did order the silencer, and that is installed in there. Um, that's about 80 or 90 bucks. It does not come with the kit. That is a separate order from TBR. Um, it sounds phenomenal either way, but without it, it's just it's just loud. It's awesome, 
but it's loud. So we went, we went ahead and threw it in there. Um, that's pretty much it so far. And to my knowledge, that's about all we intend to do. I'll give it a crank so you can hear the two brothers exhaust and then we'll call it a day. quick notice in case you saw it in the video so I don't end up hearing it in the comments looked like uh, just a little bit of moisture shot out of there that's moisture um, from uh, condensation from the pipe cooling down looks like it's time as recommended that they want you to uh, torque that down just a little bit more but it looked like there was some uh, uh, some leakage there it was coming out so I'll get that taken care of before I get out of here. But that is Kim's uh, 22 Honda Rebel 1100 DCT model. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, if I come, if I could think of anything else that I think would be beneficial to the community, we will certainly post it. Have a good night.